What is up everybody, my name is Always. welcome to the second video of Android development tutorial series. So in this video we're going to learn how to create an Android project and then I will show you how to create a virtual device for testing your application. To create an Android project, simply click on start new Android studio project and now you need to name your application. So in this case, this is our second video, so I'm going to name it Hello World. We will create a proper project uh, with these tutorial series. This is going to be an application for my company. I have a website, ozplaza.com, where I sell stuff. So I'll be creating that catalog application in this tutorial series. Then I will set up the company domain, starting with the example.com. Any app that belongs to this particular name cannot be submitted to Google Play Store. So by using this, I will make sure that it always marked as a sample application. But our particular app is going to be a clothing catalog for ozplaza.com. I'm going to set the company domain name as ozplaza.example.com. So type ozplazaexample.com. That generates a package name showed in dim characters below. The character name is also known as App Identifier and it provides a global unique identity for the app. So only one app for each identity can be hosted on Google Play Store or other distribution channels. So if you like, you can customize the package name by clicking the edit link and I'm going to change my actual package name to ozplaza.catalog. So simply click on edit. So simply remove hello world and I'm going to change that to catalog and I will use the same package name for all the sample application throughout this course. So when I install a new app, it will replace the old one on a particular device and it won't end up with a whole bunch of different apps on the devices. Next I will indicate where I'm creating a project on the disk. So for now I'll leave that the path whatever it is. Now simply click on next and in this page you need to select what kind of device you are building for. So if you are building for phone and tablet, select this. And one more important thing here that I want to show you here is that we need to select the minimum SDK. So right now we're using API 15 which is an ice cream sandwich. So if I click on this help me to choose, you can see this graph. Uh, this information is a little bit outdated so you need to go to the developer.android.com to see the current usability of the API. So right now we are using ice cream sandwich 4.0. So 97.4% people are using ice cream sandwich or above. So if you use this API, so you will be able to target the audience of 97.4%. Uh, but I would highly recommend that start from KitKat, it still have 73.9% and above. Uh, these all old APIs, if you choose an older version of API, you need to do a lot of testing and there's going to be a lot of customization. So to save yourself, choose KitKat. For this app, I'm going to choose API Ice Cream Sandwich because I want to show you all the customization you need to do, even if you choose to choose older API. So select that and simply click on next. Here you need to select the activity. So in this case, I will choose a basic activity, but if you want to start from scratch, you can select empty activity, which will have a minimum text. Let's select basic activity for this video. And now you need to type the name of your activity. This is going to be our Java class. So this is a main activity, which is going to be a Java class, a layout name, which is an XML file. So I'll leave that as activity underscore main. Title, I'll change that to hello world. So just click on finish and it's going to take a bit of time and then create a project for us. Our project has been created. So these are a few tips that Android Studio gives you. I'm going to close that. And now our project is getting built. As you can see, executing tasks. So it's building our project. It can take a bit of time. It's processing two. 
So at this point you need to wait even if it takes 5 minutes to build a project because I recently installed Android Studio and this is the first time I'm building Android Studio project on this machine. That is why it's taking a bit longer. So just be patient and wait for it to build your application. Alright guys, so our project has been built and this is the application. We can run it. I'm going to show you how to run the project. So if you go to the build menu on the top and click on make project it's gonna build a project for you and then you can click on this play button to start an application in a virtual device and then I will show you how to create your own virtual devices right so let me show you how it runs it's gonna take a bit of time as well so I'm gonna pause the video and once it's ready I will show you how our app looks it's a very basic and simple hello world application now let's run the project click on this play button and it's going to initialize our ADB, it's our virtual device. So I'll show you in a moment that how to create a virtual device. So here we're using Nexus 5X. So click OK. So our Android device is getting started. It might take a bit of while to start for the first time. So just be patient guys. It's not going to take a day, it's just going to take like a few minutes. Alright guys, so this is our basic app which actually doesn't have anything yet. So I'm going to close the Android emulator now by clicking on this button and then turning it off. And I'll show you how to create a virtual device now. So first let's just maximize this. And to create a virtual device, you need to go to Tools, Android and then go to AVD Manager. So now you see this Nexus 5X API, right? So I'm going to get rid of this and then we'll clear this by clicking on this arrow and then click on delete and get rid of this. Now you should see this screen. All right, so now let's create a virtual device. I'm gonna click on create virtual device. All right, so now we're gonna select a Nexus 6B. Uh, this, these are the new devices, the Nexus S, Nexus 1. I'm not going to select them, but I'm going to select Nexus 6P. And I'm going to click on Next here. You can select the version of your uh, version of your Android software. So we have Lollipop here, Marshmallow, and Nougat, the new one. Android Studio will automatically detect your processor and then do the work for you. So for now, we're going to select the latest version of Android. But I just want to show you that you could just download whatever you like. So these are all the x86 images as well. So if you want to go all the way back to Gingerbread, Bread, jelly beans, Kit Kat, right? So you can download them from here as well. So we're gonna select Android 7.0, which is recommended by Google Android Studio. And we have the other images as well. So it's gonna go all the way back to Cupcake, which is like deprecated now. So don't use these. So go to recommended and then select this uh, Nougat 7.1.1 with Google API. Click on next. And here, leave the name as it is of your virtual device, or you can change that as well. It's up to you guys. And then we're going to select the orientation. So it's portrait and landscape. So I'll just uh, choose portrait, right? And then emulated performance. So here, uh, you should select the hardware. So I have the graphic cards in my computer. So I will use graphics hardware because it's going to boost the performance of emulator so if you select automatic it might not use your graphic card so it's good idea to select hardware click on show advanced setting so let me just maximize this window here we can just look a bit more all right so if you go down here you can see we have the camera front and back emulated or not network it's going to show you how your network uh how your device use your network down here we have selected the emulated performance to hardware and then you can allocate the core CPU to this device. So if you have like 8 core CPU, 16 core, or 5 core, whatever it is, so you can apply to them, right? So RAM. So I have 16 gig of RAM so I can allocate this to, I'm gonna click on this and then select GB. And then I will allocate this to, let's say, 2 GB. Intel and storage. So I have 800 MB allocated to this device. You can change that as well. So let's select the GB and give it 1 GB. Now we have SD card. So there's no need to worry about because this is a virtual device. 
and then we have enabled device frame that's fine you can see that device frame as well you can customize this by nexus 7 nexus 9 or tv or whatever it is and then you need to make sure that you turn on this enable keyboard input so this is going to let you type your text from the computer keyboard it's going to be helpful a lot so let's click on finish now it's going to save the settings and then it's going to create so that's how you can create your virtual device guys it's not that hard and let's close this and now let's run the program one more time so i'm going to select this uh, nexus xp now and you can check this options use same selection for future launches so select that so it's going to ask it's not going to show you this dialog box anymore so click ok it's going to run this application to the new nexus 6p so our virtual device is starting if you're starting this for the first time as i am it could take a bit of time so be patient don't worry it will work so our android device is starting now all right so our virtual device is fully functioning i can drag from the top to bottom to look at the options and then we can actually click here to see all the apps available in the next video i'm going to give you an overview of the android studio and then we will add functionality to our app so thank you so much for watching and if you have any question let me know in the comments below and i'll talk to you guys in the next video cheers